Hey, badass business owners. Welcome back to the show. Today, I want to talk about mentors. And believe it or not, we all have mentors. Some of us have mentors that are in our local community that we look up to. Some of us pay people to be our mentor. And for some of us, our mentors come from things we listen to or things we watch. So for example, if you're listening right now to this podcast, uh, I'm just one of your many mentors because you're listening to what it is I have to say. And then you're deciding what is good for you, what's not good for you. And you're going to run with it, whatever the case may be. And I just want to kind of step back for a minute and talk a little bit about this mentorship because mentors can be extremely helpful for you when building your business but they also can be detrimental sometimes. Sometimes what will happen is we will find somebody who's out there and they look like they're crushing it. Just to make it easier, I'll focus on a local type mentor, someone in your community that you hook up with. You know, from the outside, they look like they're an amazing business. They do tons of sales. They're, they're known everywhere. Everybody knows them. Are they a good mentor? Well, that depends. First off, a good mentor needs to be able to listen but not just listen to you, but to hear exactly what it is that you're saying. They also need to be able to give you advice that is good for your business. And sometimes what happens is people regurgitate the advice that was good for their business, but it may or may not be best for your business. So you're the only one that can make that determination is saying, hey, I hear what they're saying. I see what they're doing. Will this work for me? And if so, how? Same thing goes when they start to talk about money, because a lot of times what happens is people give the illusion that they have money. So for example, let's say somebody owns a company and they happen to have four or five trucks and they've wrapped them. So you see them everywhere and they're always busy and they're running around. So in your eyes, you're looking at them like, oh, I just want to be like them. They've got all these trucks. They've got all this business. They're busier than heck. I want to copy them because they obviously got it going on and they know what they're doing. But here's where I want to say, slow down, Turbo, because what you don't know is you don't know their books. You don't know what's going on behind the scenes. There's a reason why The Millionaire Next Door was a very famous book, because it talks about the fact that the people that are true millionaires don't look like millionaires. And the people that are out there driving the fancy cars, living in the fancy houses, in the fancy clothes, they aren't millionaires. They spend a lot of money and they do not save and they do not have any wealth. Well, be careful because there's a lot of small businesses out there that look really successful on the outside because they have all these trucks, they have all this business, but when you look at their books, they're not making anywhere near the amount of money that they could or they should. And when you are partnering up with them, you want to make sure that you're talking to them about the whole enchilada, okay? Not just how they got the sales, but how do they keep the sales? How do they keep their profit? Now, they don't have to open up their books and show you their bottom line or whatever the case may be. But if they're not using terms just in general, saying I got 15% bottom line or I've got 20% bottom line, you know, if they're not talking anything about their bottom line, then you've got to start kind of wondering why. You know, if they just keep bragging about the fact that they did a million in sales last year, that's great. But I've seen people do multi millions of sales and have nothing at the end of the day, have 2%, 3%, 5%. That's nothing. You don't need all those sales. I'd rather have half a million in sales making 15% bottom line than a million in sales making 2% bottom line. It all comes down to profit. Remember, this is a profit game, not a sales game. So it's really important that when you're picking your mentors, decide what you're trying to get out of them. So for example, let's just say this same small business is doing fantastic. You you see the sales, they definitely got it. They have the brand recognition. Then what you want to do is say, use them for brand recognition. What are they doing really well for brand recognition? What are they doing really well for driving those sales? What kind of marketing do they do? Definitely emulate them when it comes to that stuff, but pause for a second. For example, let's just say that they sit there and they tell you that they spent $10,000 on advertising the year before, and that's how they got all that brand recognition. Okay, great. That sounds good. But how much business did they get off of that What was the return on the investment of the $10,000? Was it $10,000 in loss? Did they not make any additional sales because of it? Ask them the questions. Just say, hey, how much business do you think you got off of that? And they make a, well, from the advertising, I really didn't get anything, but you can see what it does for my brand recognition. All right, well, then that just means that you are throwing away the $10,000 for the brand recognition, which may or may not be right or wrong, depends on your business, 
But you as the smart business owner who's really trying to understand your business numbers, at least know in advance that you need to have a return on that 10,000, whether it's nothing because it's really pushing brand recognition or you're expecting a certain amount in sales. Same thing with all those trucks. When you see someone with four or five trucks, ask them what their maintenance is month to month. How much money are they spending on the loans they've taken out on these vehicles? How much are they spending on repairs and maintenance? Because that's going to give you a clue as to how much of their sales is being eaten up by that. You know, just ask a certain question, you know, how much annually do you spend on repairs and maintenance? If they sit there and they tell you, oh, it's about 5%. Okay, that sounds about right. But if they sit there and they tell you, oh man, I have no idea. I just know it's lots of money. Okay, that's a warning sign for you right there that they don't really know. And that could be a really high amount, which is what's eating into their profits as well. The whole thing, the whole point of what I want to say is I want you to have mentors. I want you to have people that you listen to, whether it's online, you watch them on videos, they're in your local community, what where you know, you pay for them because you love their program. At the end of the day, Remember, it's important that you understand what you're trying to get out of that particular mentor. Is that mentor going to help you run a more profitable business? Is that mentor specifically to help you with advertising in your business? Because by the way, even on advertising, before I forget, you know, a lot of people will tell you, especially these uh, marketing people, they'll tell you they'll do all your marketing, they'll do social media and all this other stuff. And it sounds great. And they want to be your mentor for that. But at the end of the day, if it's not, if you're spending, once again, if you're spending a couple thousand dollars on their products, you better be bringing in a lot more sales. So whatever you choose to use your mentor for, decide what it is. You know, if they've got a great way that they onboard people, that they hire people, that they train them, definitely use them as a mentor to get better at that particular skill. If they have very low turnover and you're experiencing very high turnover in your people, what are they doing to keep those people? So I'm not telling you not to use mentors I just asking you to make sure that you're you're not falling in love with them and getting all caught up if you're not understanding what their profitability is. Be specific what you're trying to get out of that mentor so that way you can maximize what you get out of it to return into your business. I've watched way too many people partner up or be mentored by certain business owners and those business owners because they weren't profitable they taught them very bad habits and how to spend money. You'll hear people say all the time, oh no, it's okay to be in debt. You know, I, I've had businesses that had $100,000 in debt and everyone's like, but yeah, they're well known. They've got lots of trucks. They look good. But you know what? They don't make any money because the money they make, they think they make money. But the reality is not after they pay the bills, not after they pay these um, payments on all of this loan. And by the way, if they tried to sell the business, it wouldn't be nearly worth as much as they think it is because they have to pay off all this loan money that they have taken out. So please, whatever you do, when you take on mentors, uh, which I definitely think you need to do, I'm just saying, be careful, do your homework, know exactly what it is you're trying to get out of them, ask some questions. You know what? If, the, if you're hearing some buzzwords that make you go, wow, okay, maybe they're not as profitable as I think, or maybe, you know, it sounds great that they do all these things, but they don't seem to know what their return on their investment is. What can I take from it? Because once again, I love learning from from people. And I learn from people that are really good. And I learn from people that do things really bad. And because I don't have to make the same mistakes that somebody else has made, I can learn from them just because of the mistakes that they make. That way I don't make those mistakes. So someone could be one of your mentors, but not in the way that they think. You're using it more to say, okay, I see that they do this part wrong. Why are they doing it wrong? Why do they not make money doing this? Or why does this always backfire? Ask those questions. So once again, mentors can be fabulous, both good and bad. Matter of fact, I remember one mentor of mine, well, he wasn't a mentor, but he was a boss of mine. And when I got promoted, he was like, oh, I taught you everything you you know. And I was really ticked. And in that moment, I sat back and I looked at him and I said, yeah, you taught me everything I would never be. So yes, you can learn from people, good and bad. It's just a matter of making sure that you don't fall in love with what you see, but you do your homework and understand behind the scenes what those numbers are, because we are all about understanding those business numbers. So anybody that you choose to be part of your mentorship, to be part of your world, make sure you're very clear on what it is you're getting out of them. All right. They probably doing some things that are amazing. Maybe they have a great way that they, uh, 
schedule their teams and, and get them out into the field and you want to say, okay, I want to really copy that piece. I don't want to copy the, what they do with the, how they run their business, but I love the way that they do the scheduling uh, for their for their trucks or whatever the case may be, or how they sell their product or how they run their business. You know, every time I go into this business, it's beautiful, it's wonderful, it's great. You know, they might be losing money. Copy what part of their business that you really like for your brick and mortar. So there's so many different ways to look at this. And I, I know I'm going to start repeating myself here and I don't want to do that. Uh, my main thing is take on mentors, love mentors, know exactly what it is you're trying to get out of that mentor and be very cautious when it comes to the profitability impact until you can have some numbers that support it or some conversation around what supports it. They're probably not going to open up their books and show it to you. But if they sound like they know their numbers and they're able to say, yeah, this is my return on this. This is what I get out of this. This is money I'm throwing away, but this is what I get. You know, if they're talking like that, then definitely listen to what they're trying to tell you because they're giving you some hints. Have some mentors, go learn a lot from them, both good and bad. Just be very cautious. Make sure that you're not impacting your profitability by trying to emulate some of the things that they're doing that aren't profitable actions. Okay, you want more sales, yes, but you also want profit. This isn't a sales game, it's a profit game. So it's really important that you know exactly what your agenda is by having these mentors. All right, hopefully uh, some of that resonated with you and I'll talk to you on the next episode. Bye for now. Hey, badass business owner, before you go, as you know, I'm a huge believer in you knowing your business numbers. After all, it isn't about how much you sell. It's about what you keep. And the best way to grow your profits is to start diving in and understanding those business numbers. To help you on this journey, I have created the Know Your Business Numbers course. We will walk through how to read your profit and loss statement. You'll learn the key calculations that'll help ensure that you're making a healthy profit on all of your products or services, plus a ton of other good stuff that'll help you learn how to use those business numbers to create even more sales and profits. Just check out the link below in the show notes or visit knowyourbusinessnumberscourse.com. So if you're ready to increase those profits, it's time you start diving into your business numbers. Mm-hmm.